even if you can do one or two of these things, it will take you closer to you being self-sufficient. Hi guys, welcome. My name's Kathy. If you haven't been here before to my channel, I am living on a house block here with my husband Tim and our dog Millie. And our goal is to eventually move from here to some more land. But in the meantime, we are doing all that we can to try and be self-sufficient and to show you guys how to do it on an urban block. So there's some obvious things that we can't do on an urban block that you would be able to do on a big property or a large homestead, like having large animals and millions of chooks running around but I will show you my top 12 ideas how we have progressed from being just a normal urban household into doing as much self sufficiently as we can and how easy it is for you and you don't have to do all of these things but even if you just start somewhere it might give you some ideas and show you how easy it is to start you on your journey to being self sufficient <music> My number one tip, it starts with clean filtered water and this is our water filter here. I'm just going to turn you around and I'll talk to you a bit about that. This is my bench top water filter. You fill up the top part here, you take the lid off and fill that up with water and it passes through that ceramic filter and then down into here it captures it and it goes through those filters and some rocks and then comes out clean water at the bottom. It doesn't take the fluoride out of the water but it takes most other things out of it. Now the water here where I live is very highly chlorinated and I believe that we all need to be drinking good filtered water and a lot of it to keep our bodies healthy and I really do not want to drink what comes out of the taps because it's got all sorts of chemicals in it and here when I turn on my town water here into the sink it just smells like a chlorine swimming pool and nearly makes me sick. You don't have to buy one of these elaborate setups but even just one of those little bench top jugs would do fine just to get you started. Number two is tanks. We've got this one here, which has just been filled up with all the rainwater from last night. We have it comes off the roof of our garage there into the tank, not a very elaborate system. And then we put that, a pipe on that over across to this IBC here and drain it out. And then that's empty again, ready for use to be filled next time it rains. And we just scoop the water out with that watering can there. Just a really, really simple, way to capture water. You can also do this with wheelie bins, big drums, swimming pools, anything like that. Just make sure that if it's fairly low to the ground that you empty it out quickly so that the kids can't get into it. Just use that to water your garden with. And my tip number three is to teach yourself to learn how to cook from scratch. 
But the most important thing is just to start somewhere with something easy and please don't be intimidated and even if you have to start eating your veggies raw by eating salads and grating them into your salads at least you are starting to get that fresh produce into your diet and then as you get a bit more confident you can perhaps add one or two new recipes each week just keep rotating those recipes and then adding in a new one each week and before you know it you'll have some beautiful recipes and you'll be really improving the health of your family and your diet and if you've got kids get them involved too kids love helping out with food and it helps to give them an interest in where their food comes from too. Number four is use what you have. Now this is a perfect example of using up some apples that I had. I had an excess of apples and I've just put them in here and I'm making some apple cider vinegar. And I've also just done a clean out of my freezer and taken an inventory of what's in there so I know what we've got and I found some meat and some bread in there that needed to be used up so we're having that tonight making do with what we've got and i think it's just teaching us to be a bit more resourceful at the moment too and to use what we've got and to minimize our trips outside and i'll link below the recipe for the broth that i make out of scraps what i do is i collect all my scraps and i freeze them in the freezer and then i just make up a broth or a soup when i've got time to do that so try that out for yourself too number five is to read as much as you can read books and gain knowledge i'm just showing you across the top there a few of my books and down here I do have a little bit of an obsession with cooking books and anything to do with uh, self-sufficiency and gardening you can also borrow books from your library you don't have to spend a lot of money and purchase books you can get them secondhand at garage sales quite often there'll be book sales and you can get knowledge too by watching other fellow youtubers and learning from what they do number six is grow what you can with what you've got available we have a small backyard so we've had to do a lot of unusual things like growing up trellises to maximize our growing space we've also grown a lot in pots and we've grown all types of veggies we've had pumpkins we've got beans all sorts of things capsicums tomatoes we've been growing in pots you can even do that on your veranda if you're limited for space another space saving idea here i've got some trays and i've filled them with some soil and i've sprinkled out some lettuce seeds on those and some spinach seeds you can do that with any type of microgreen and they will probably take about three weeks and then we'll be harvesting those to eat and to put in salads this is a great idea if you've got a beautiful sunny window you could put a little shelf up and you could grow them like that even indoors if you were limited for space so there's a lot of things that you can do don't be put off and think that you've got to have great big areas of gardens to be able to start growing your own things this is a really simple way to get yourself started number seven is to preserve your harvest anything that you've got left over kind of speaks for itself you just try and do some sort of preserving uh, make sauce freeze it anything like that so that you've got your produce to eat all year round number eight is save your seeds this is something i'm really passionate about i like to save a lot of seeds and i give them away to friends and family because i want everybody to have access to seeds now i take the seeds out of all my pumpkins and dry them out and save them this is a bag here of oregano that i've got i just cut all the heads off and put it into this bag and all the seeds are down here in the bottom i've got so many seeds here it's one of the most important things that you can do is to save your seeds and make sure that you can get heirloom seeds or non-gmo seeds as much as you can if you get a really really good quality seed then you know that what you're going to grow is going to grow the same probably one of the most important is number eight save your seeds 
And number nine is foraging. This is one of my favorite things to do. And there's all sorts of free food out there in the fields, on the sides of the roads, just waiting to be picked and eaten. But the one thing that I do recommend is for you to go with someone who can show you the ropes and who knows what things are edible because there are so many things out there they look the same and some things can be quite poisonous especially mushrooms that's one of the things that you really need to be careful on but once you fine tune your skills there's a whole lot of stuff out there that um, is there for the, the picking and start with the obvious things like apples and fruits that you know and then you can get with someone who is experienced in this and they can show you the ropes so it, there's a lot of fun to be had out there foraging number 10 is recycle and reuse there's so much that we throw away in our what very wasteful society that can be recycled and reused and upcycled I reuse all my glass jars I there's just so much that you can do and I'm sure a lot of you already are well on the way to being fantastic recyclers but that is number 10 just think before you go to throw something out think about how you might be able to repurpose it or reuse it I love to repair things and I love to sew and mend my clothes and get more wear out of them so that's something else that you can do as well number 11 is to barter and swap it's a fantastic way to get rid of things that you've got excess of that you don't need to be able to swap for goods or services with other people that have things that you're after and no money has to change hands or very little money has to change hands if you've got things of equal value and Honestly, you don't know that what you've got might be just what someone else is looking for. So get onto some of those Facebook groups where they barter and swap and sell and join in and see what you've got to offer those people and what you can get as well. But it's a great way to swap your excess produce too. And number 12 is chickens. Now we don't have any backyard chickens here because I'm gonna wait until we move and get to our next place and I'll, I'll have chickens everywhere. But chickens are a fantastic thing for self-sufficiency. Now, not only can you eat their eggs, you can eat the chickens themselves if that's the way you wanna go, but they produce their their poo is fantastic fertilizer on your garden. They eat insects, you can put scraps to them. So they are just a great thing to have and I would recommend chickens. Now we really wanted them here but we can't have them with Millie. So when we get to our next place, I'm going to have chickens galore. So that's my 12 tips, but there's one more thing that I wanted to add to that as well. And that was that if this is the lifestyle that you want and you think that it's out of your reach, just go talk to other people about what they've done. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you've got and we've still got a long way to go, but I do here as much as I can, as much as I'm physically able to. Um, can't always do everything that we want to do because we're on a smaller block and because of council restrictions and neighbours but if I could do a lot more I would and it's just one of those things where you can start small and do it add in little things bit by bit and before you know it you'll be quite self-sufficient and even if you can do one or two of these things it will take you closer to being self-sufficient and looking after yourselves and taking charge of, of yourself. So thanks guys for uh, watching. I hope I've been giving you some sort of tips here or a little bit of inspiration. I've only just lightly gone over things, but um, I will 
get into some more things in depth later on in other videos but thanks for watching everyone and I hope you're all doing well in this really difficult time and stay safe and just look after yourself and I'll see you next time bye